Hello and welcome back. Today is Thursday, March the 17th. We continue in uh, chapter 3 of Colossians, today focusing our attention to verses 5 through 6, which says this, Put to death, therefore, whatever is in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. So obviously, tra Paul, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Obviously, Paul is trying to make sure that he is sending a clear message to the people of Colossia of what happens when they do not follow um, God. This was, uh, <coughs> you can call this, <clears throat> excuse me, you can call this a scare tactic. In fact, there have been several denominations through the years who have um, used scare ta tactics as a way of gathering people into their belief or religion. Um, I won't point out, uh, well, I guess, yeah, because it is true. I mean, we can say this. Um, the Catholic Church, for example, um, back in the day would... Um, this was, of course, the, the whole point and the whole reason why the Reformation happened, because the Catholic Church was basically telling people that they needed to pay in order to be forgiven of their sins, and they needed to pay in order to keep their loved ones from burning in purgatory and in hell and, um, and all these horrible things. Um, and so that's how they collected the money to build what is today. St. Peter's Basilica, um, which still stands, by the way, in uh, Vatican City. So, having said that, um, Paul is wanting to make sure that he, he is sending a clear message that there is a wrath of God. And this was would have been understood very clearly by the Jewish people uh, during the time of the Old Testament, um, this was the reason why Jews followed God, because they, in many cases, feared God. They knew that there was a wrath of God. Um, it was very evident and very clear throughout the Old Testament. However, although they had a very uh, wrathful God, you can say, they also had a God that would guide them and be with them during times of war, during times of um when they were uh, being pursued by Ramses, as they were at the beginning of the Exodus story, um, it, you know there was a pillar of fire that that uh, kept uh, Ferris, uh, the uh, the Pharaoh and his armies away. Um, and then it was said that there was a uh, you know a cloud that would uh, protect them um, as they wander through the wilderness. Um, so even though they believed that, that yes, they was a God that would cause, um, harm should they be disobedient, they were also very aware that they had a loving God. Um, so what Paul is talking about here is wanting to be very clear, um, about putting something to death. You know, this is something that, um, that is important that we think about. Um, even in our day and age, about the things in our lives that we need to put to death um, in order for us to see more clearly, in order for us to focus our attention on our loving and um, and our and our who God is and honoring God. Um, and when you think about what He's listed here, these are all things of the flesh, things that keep us from focusing on other things, um, such as. Um, being a person who is loving and giving. Um, so the impurity, the passion, the evil desire, the greed or, or idolatry. Um, the Greek word that's used here is actually mortify, which is uh, which means to make dead, to make a corpse of or put to death. That's the Greek word that's used here. And when you think about when you put, when something dies, when it when it dies, there is no um, no substance of it left. 
there is no, um, there's nothing that you can still piece together of it for it to exist, right? When something dies, I'm thinking of, um, particularly, <laughs> um, when, uh, when we we have a, we all have a tendency we all have fears uh, mine just happens to be uh, sometimes small insects particularly spiders and whenever I see a spider I just want to crush it and want it to die uh, that's not very Christian like but it is truth for me um, I don't particularly care for them at all um, and I tend to kill them before I do anything else now if they happen to be near a door near a window yes I do try to put it outside. But if it's in the middle of my home and I happen to see it, yeah, I want it to die. I want it to end. And so I don't have that fear anymore. And I realize that that's driven by my fear. Um, but um, when, when that is put to death, it's, it's out of sight, out of mind, right? You don't have to think about it anymore. That's what Paul's saying here is that all of the things of the flesh that we, um, have these impure thoughts, these evil desires, these, um, idolatry is a huge one. And, and particularly this was in reference to, um, and I found this reference. I wanted to share the word that's used here for idolatry means, um, yes, that you, you care about yourself more than anything else. That's what the Greek word implies here. So the word for greed, which is idolatry, that's why they put it in parentheses. Um, because idolatry means to, um, when you idolize something else above God or something else. In this case, uh, the greed, the word for greed here is actually a word that implies self-idolatry. Meaning you put yourself above something, somebody or something else. And obviously, if, if we are focusing all on ourself, if we are concerned about our own greed, our own passions, our own desires, then how can we focus on our God? And that's what P Paul is getting at here. And that's what he was trying to get across to the people of Colossae. So the second part of this, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. Again, this was Paul making sure they understood the law. And for people to be disobedient during the time of, of uh, in the in during this time, um, and the Jews knew this to be law. To be disobedient was meant that you would carry some sort of uh, great wrath. And was that meant to be a scary thing? I think so. But when we think about what the wrath of God is, we have to think about the things that happened in the Old Testament. Some of them were good and some of them were bad. Um, and, um, and I think when we think about the wrath of God, it is not in an effort. It should not be something that we think, think of that's going to be scary. I believe that the wrath of God will be something that will harm us, but that, that God will not abandon us, if that makes sense. Because we have a God who desires, again, to be in relationship with us. We don't have a God that desires to hurt us. We don't have a God that desires us desires us to hurt in any way. However, the wrath of God implies that, the, that quite the opposite. And so it's a difficult term, but I think, um, let, me, let me see if I can put it a different way. All right. When, when you're a parent and I'm, I'm not a parent, so I'm going to, I know I'm kind of stretching here, but when you're a parent and you, when, when you have a child that is disobedient, they, there is punishment, right? There is that punishment is obviously there to teach them a lesson, but not necessarily to hurt them, right? There is no, usually there's not any physical harm. It's emotional. It might be emotionally scarring. It might be, um, and, and it might physically cause them like not be able to go somewhere or something, but it doesn't actually hurt them. If that's a better analogy, I believe that's what the wrath of God is. I believe that it, it, when the time comes and when the wrath of God does happen to those who are disobedient, that there will be a price to pay. But I do not believe that we have a God that will physically 
uh, hurt us in any way and cause us harm because I don't believe we have a God that functions that way. And I know that's a little bit sketchy and hard to understand, but, um, you know, again, this goes back to the mystery of God. Some things we aren't meant to understand. And I know that's a difficult concept to understand too. But uh, as Luther said, you know, we have this hidden God and revealed God. And, and, and I believe that that is one of the elements of the hidden God that we cannot grasp our, our wrap our mind around. But when I think about the wrath of God, that's what I think about as a parent that's so um, teaching a child a lesson by having them do something or have, um, you know, give, giving them some sort of penalty that doesn't actually cause them some sort of harm. And that's what I believe our father, our creator will do to those who are disobedient in the end time. So I hope that makes sense. So with that, let us pray. God of resurrection power, we rejoice in the faith that calls us to follow Jesus wherever he leads. Be with us on the mountains, in the valleys, and at the cross. In all the circumstances of our lives, we want to live more and more like him. Every day, let us rise with him, in him, and through him. In Jesus' name, amen. See you tomorrow.